hundreds of Australians are stung by European wasps every summer. Some so badly that they end up in hospital. So far, there have been no recorded deaths in this country, but in the United States, they kill between 40 and 50 people every year. It can be fatal, yes. But the majority of deaths of humans for, as a result of wasp stings are generally as a result of, of asphyxiation, where a wasp stings the throat or the tongue of, of the person, and because of the swelling, they just choke to death. That's the most common method of dying from wasp stings. My throat started to close up and it felt real tight and I started to like wheeze and um, it was really hard to breathe and I could feel it like starting to, starting to swell up and get really warm there. Clayton Belcher was mowing the lawn when he got three stings on the leg. He's one of the unlucky minority who suffer a life-threatening reaction. The doctor um, gave me adrenaline almost straight away. And he said, you, you were pretty lucky because uh, when your throat starts to close up, it will close all the way up and you can't breathe. What can you do to protect yourself now? Once a month, I have to go to the um, doctor or Westmead Hospital and get needles, one in each arm, because I'm the only one in Westmead Hospital allergic to European wasp and paper wasp. So I get an, a maintenance dose each month, once a month for about five years. Have you told your dad you don't want to mow the lawns anymore? I tried to, but he said, no, I'm sorry, it's your job, so I'm stuck with it. You can still see the remnants of the, of the ring of where the wasp nest was. It came out about this far. Philip Mortlock so had a close shave too when he took to a European wasp nest what did you notice with first? a garden hose. And how long did it take you to realise that was a mistake? A few seconds. <laughs> a few moments and I was backing away thinking, I'd better get away from here, and that's when a few of them caught up with me. Not a good idea? Terrible. No, I mean, that would just rip off the envelope. Presumably it was in a garage or a shed or somewhere and exposed. He would have just ripped off the envelope of the nest and released three, four, five thousand wasps. Angry wasps. Angry wasps protecting their home and seeing a figure moving in the, in the, in the foreground with a hose and would go straight for him. So he was lucky to get away with uh, whatever he got away with. Various attempts have been made to control the spread of the wasps from experiments in biological control in Victoria to local council campaigns to search out and destroy nests. But for now, it appears the wasps are winning. Could we be doing more than we're currently doing? Well, I think we're doing nothing at the moment. Uh, my, my research is, is, is really a hobby for me. I don't get paid to do it. Uh, and I gather there's no, no other research being done in Australia on European wasp. And the problem is, these wasps have really made themselves at home. Cat food, dog food, all that sort of stuff, they just love bones. I've seen ham sandwiches thrown, thrown away on the ground and absolutely covered in wasps, just tearing out the ham to take back to their nest and feed their young. They also feed themselves on carbohydrate uh, sugars, so they go for the sweet things such as the soft drinks, um, the desserts, the ice cream, the fruit, particularly if it's damaged and, 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 and the like, and fermenting. They just love fermenting objects. And also they, they go for beer. So, so just about everything we enjoy at a barbecue is a is perfect wasp magnet. A potential resource for their livelihood, sure. <laughs> 190, thanks. Bruce Potter says the wasps are more than a mere nuisance. They're starting to affect the takings at this shop in Sydney's Oyster Bay. The customers will come in, they'll, they'll see the wasps, they'll uh, get a little bit frightened, uh, they're trying to uh, get served or they're standing right back. And uh, quite a few of them have just walked out, they just won't come in. And along the street, Jeff Denford in the fruit shop can't get rid of the wasps either. They bother your customers? Well, they bother them because they're worried for their children, they're worried for themselves when they pick up the grapes, they fly out. And Cake shops and fruit shops may be targets today, but if what's happened overseas is a guide, there's worse to come. In Europe, in, in some of the Greek islands, and Skopelos in particular, the European wasp, again the same species that we have here, has caused a lot of problems with the tourist industry there. In fact, they've had to evacuate people from hotels, and there's grave concern that the beekeeping industry and tourism on Skopolis will, from time to time, be very badly affected by the European wasp. And I can see the situation happening in, in Australia, of course.
Where they come from, the bitter cold of Europe's winters kills off their nests. Our problem is that in the milder climate of Australia, these uninvited migrants are really thriving. In many, many cases, the nests, instead of dying out in the, in the late autumn and early winter, they continue. They, get, they just maintain and, and their size during the winter months, but in the spring, there's a nest there with maybe five or six thousand workers and maybe hundreds of queens, and these things just explode in size. So you can get nests weighing half a ton, 450, 480 kilograms, some of these nests weigh. And of course, nests like that are highly dangerous. If anybody was to stumble into a nest like that, uh, I wouldn't rate their chances very highly at all. Have we left it too late? The stable door is wide open uh, and the horse is bolted I mean, in a big way. I mean, it's spread over such a big area now, there's no way we're going to control it in any, any, any significant way. They're here to stay? They're here to stay.